In this video, we go over my final team selection before game week one. How have I set my team up and why is it the best layout for the start of the Fantasy Premier League season? All of that coming up next. What the flock is going on and welcome to FPL Today and are you ready? for the start of the Fantasy Premier League and are you ready to see my team? Potentially the best way to start your Fantasy Premier League season. If you are ready, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as we go on another season-long journey where hopefully, for the first time ever, I'm going to break the top 10k. So make sure to stay tuned because this is the year, I promise you guys. But anyway, we are going to look at my starting 11 and my bench and I'm going to explain exactly why I've gone with it this way and what little changes I might make before the actual deadline on Saturday. So here it is, no slow build up, you have Raya in goal, you have Trent Alexander-Arnold, Cancelo and Robertson in defence, potentially the three highest scoring defenders this season, let's be real, they are the ones that are most likely to get a lot of attacking returns and there's only a few that could maybe usurp them. We've then got a midfield of Mohamed Salah. Who doesn't own Mohamed Salah? No Salah just shouldn't be a thing. I don't know why anyone even considers it. He has been consistent and regular season upon season. And until he proves otherwise, he ain't leaving my team. Then we've got a midfield that... Would I like a little £8 million midfielder in there? Of course I would. But instead we've got Neto, who does look like he'll be fit for the start of the season. I do like Wolves starting fixtures of Leeds, Fulham... And then it is Tottenham, but then it's Newcastle, Bournemouth and Southampton in there. And to be honest, any player that has a fixture against Bournemouth in the first eight game weeks, I'm interested in because Bournemouth look like there could be some real issues there. We have Martinelli, who again, part of that Arsenal attacking lineup that looks like they could do some damage this season. And then Bailey, absolutely fantastic during preseason. And most importantly, first game against Bournemouth. And that's why Watkins is in the side as well. I know it's not popular to have a 7 to 7.5 million pound striker in your front line. To be honest, it's not popular to have three forwards either. But I'm going with it because, again, I think it could do some damage in the early season. And of course, we have a wild card to play before we have unlimited transfers when the World Cup does start. So early wild card can fix any issues. And I feel like this setup should allow me to move to players quickly, apart from my, one of my favourite players, Young Min Son. And then it's Jesus and Kane up front. Kane likely to change in game week two to Erling Haaland because Man City have Bournemouth at home. So I may have booked in a transfer already, but I just feel like Kane is a good pick for the first game of the season with Southampton at home. Potential captaincy candidate, although to be honest, the easy and most sensible choice would be Mohamed Salah because he just always starts the season off with a bang and he's got Fulham. But that is the starting 11 with a bench of Sanchez. That is for rotation. We've got Williams. He is basically there because otherwise we'd go over budget. But also we're hopeful that he could do something at Nottingham Forest. And we've got Jansen from Brentford. He can come in if I don't particularly like the fixtures of a Neto, a Martinelli or a Bailey. And finally Pereira as well, who looks like he could be the set piece taker for Fulham. So yeah, budget bench. We can always fix that with the wild card. Hopefully they raise in value and we have a higher team value so we can make some clever and intelligent moves when we actually get to using that wild card. Now, the things that could change. Would I like an £8 million midfielder? Yes, sir. Please, sir. Can I have some more money in my budget, sir? But unfortunately, I can't fit that in whilst also having the likes of Kane, Jesus, Watkins and the bat line so expensive. So with Man City having Bournemouth in game week two, I do not think... I can really transfer out a Man City player and not go to my transfer of Erling Haaland for Kane in game week two. Digne is someone I like the look of at Aston Villa. It would mean for the beginning of the season an Aston Villa triple up and I'm really putting all my eggs in one basket. But I just have a feeling Villa could have an absolute great start to the season against Bournemouth because I do think things aren't right with that ship just yet. The only other way I can really get the money to upgrade Martinelli is £2 million to upgrade him. Other than bringing in Digne for the likes of a Robertson, which again I'm not overly fond of, would be to look at downgrading a Kane or going to a cheaper option of £5.5 for a striker 
And the problem is, I don't know who a good 5.5 mini striker is. You've got Mateta, you've got Edward, and you've got Undav, and maybe Inciso, Brighton and Crystal Palace players there. I don't know which one of those is going to be a good choice. Watkins looks like a starter with Bournemouth in the first game. So it could be I just don't have an £8 million midfielder for the beginning of the season. But that is literally all that I really want to change. I have the defenders I really want. I don't trust Chelsea's defence yet. I would love Ivan Perisic. He is another way for me to save money. But to get £2 million, Ivan Perisic doesn't save me enough off of Robertson. Doherty could be another option as well. Again, first game of the season, I'm going to watch as much of it as I possibly can, even though I've got work. But match of the day is there for a reason. Hopefully, I will know what changes to make other than Erling Haaland in for Kane, unless something drastic happens to Erling Haaland in game week one. So guys, that is it. So if you don't agree with me, let me know in the comments. If you do agree with me, let me know in the comments because usually people don't agree with me. So I'd like a little bit more agreement with my decisions. That would be very nice. And also make sure to subscribe and hit that like button on this video. Please do join me for this journey into the Fantasy Premier League season. And hopefully we'll be getting lots of content out for you that is just a little bit different compared to what else is out there. With that being said, I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And this year is the year.